as we've said previously, especially in the beginning stages of your understanding of modeling of the forms, you want to choose as simple objects as possible. Cylinders, little bowls that are more cylindrical than flared, where the, where the shapes are easily seen and the color variations are easily seen. See, baby tiger has come to see us. Regardless of the light key, the fundamental principle of how we go about this is the same as explained previously. Blocking the view, buddy.
Hey, buddy. As we've said before, you can't do any modeling, at least none that's relevant to the light key, unless your masses are as good as you can get them. So we have to make the start, restate those a couple of times um, until we get them, the large notes, as related as possible. And when we get there, then we can start breaking down the form planes. Henry said that even on a gray day, which is what we have now, the light is always directional. So to start with, you have to figure out where the sun is behind the clouds and analyze your setup and see it's obvious that this is the lit side, that's the shade side, and that there are also cast shadows on a gray day. No matter how subtle they are as far as light and dark is concerned, they're always a completely different color than the adjacent note, which is the important part.
Okay, now that we've got the general masses straightened out a little bit, and all that white covered, the first large division that you make in the form that is the beginning of the modeling process is the half light plane. It's not a half tone, it has nothing to do with values, it has to do with the way the light is breaking across the form. And it's called a half light plane because basically that's what it is. It's receiving about half the light that the light plane is. And regardless of what you've read or had told to you by painting teachers or whatever, the half light does not belong to the shade plane. It has nothing to do with the dark side. It has everything to do with how the light breaks across the form and the luminous quality of that note in its division. So let's put those in. half light on the front of the jar appeared some off greenish color whereas the half light on the shoulder of the pot had more of a rose quality to it because of the reflection of the sky that's what you got to do you look and you compare you look and you compare back and forth back and forth became obvious when the half light plane went on the inside of the bowl 
that the shadow node on the inside was too washed out and the light plane wasn't luminous enough. That's the function of every color that you put on your study is it creates a new basis for comparison to the adjacent notes and to every other note on the board. It's like tuning an instrument, tuning a string on a guitar. A little tighter, a little looser, a little tighter, a little looser. Yeah, that sounds pretty good, but it sounds wrong with the one next to it. Well, is it the one next to it or is it the one you just tuned? So it's a constant back and forth, back and forth until your eye gets trained well enough to see the differences more quickly. And you're able to make a closer adjustment more quickly, but the final adjustment will always be you know, it's hit or miss. We put it up, if it's right, it's obvious. If it's wrong, it's obvious. If it's wrong, we change it. And we try not to be stupid and change the ones that are right, although we've all been known to do that too. The half light on the pot obviously made half of the shadow note appear completely differently than it did the first time, um, the first observation. Instead of appearing greenish, now the outer part appears deeper and more of a red note. Make your comparisons. Move back over to the light plane. Okay, well. Next to the half lit, in this light, there's a section that's about three quarters lit. It's not nearly as luminous as the full light plane, but it's not appearing to be half light like the half light plane. So there's another division there, right there. Then on the shoulder of the pot where it breaks from upper shoulder to side, there's obviously an area there that's completely different from either one of the frontal planes or either one of the shoulder planes. So we'll try to make those. You look at the nose and say, yeah, it's an earthy, orangish, goldenish something. But it also looks like it might have a little bit of turquoise in it. Ah, but when I see the sky reflecting in the upper half of that, it's more of a rose color. Except for where it comes right next to the highlit area, then it appears very bluish turquoisey because of a combination of the reflection of the sky and also that's the most lit area on this form. So you're constantly back and forth, back and forth, asking yourself these questions. Well, what is that? Well, it's a little greener, it's a little bluer, it's a little yellower. And you attempt to adjust each one of the notes as best you can. That's the whole process. Now there was a reason that you chose the color that you did for your mass. 
So in some way, the color of the light mass and the shadow mass should play in somewhere as actually one of the variations, at least in the beginning stages of your modeling process. your flat plane, your ground plane, and still life and landscape. is the most critical of all the modeling problems. And there are plenty of them, but it's, if your ground plane's not solid, then there's nowhere for the other forms to sit. They will appear like they're floating. Even if you stick a stick down, a sit down note under them like I do so I can see where I am and not get lost. Like everything else, we've, we've put this in which changed the mass note, but it's obvious that there's four or five or six other notes in that area. We don't try to skip to them. We don't try to rush to them. We don't start, to tr start trying to put little damn knots and knot holes and rusty screw heads and stuff in. All those kind of petty details are completely irrelevant. They're even irrelevant at the end. But people who are obsessive are going to put that kind of stuff in, which in turn generally destroys the overall volumes and weights and forms and relationships by attracting too much attention to themselves. So you can put them in, but they're very specific color notes that also have to fit in the light key and be a part of the modeling and not stand out. The individual notes are much easier to see in stronger light. That's why you start off doing a lot of your understand, learning a lot of things and getting your understanding from studying sunny days, different types of sunny days, as long as there's a strong light, a strong shade, cast shadows, etc. The contrasts are, between colors are fairly obvious. Uh, on a gray day, they skip out on you pretty quickly. No, that wasn't black. 
nice quality raw umber. As you progress, you'll find out that there are quite a few earth colors that need to be on your palette. time to change the mass of the background because I could no longer really tell what colors were on the upper part of the pot because the background was the wrong color. That's how relational color works. So you, the thing that's most obviously wrong, that's the thing that you change right now. Even if you're picking around someplace else, if it becomes that obvious, you hop to it, you fix it, then you go back to where you were. See what appeared as a pinkish off note in the mass becomes more obviously a th off phthalo ish type green as one of the slats on the table. And you always want to flatten your notes into planes. No matter how cutesy the broken color looks, it's a false note. I don't know if the camera's picking up these off notes or not. I don't want to repeat something that we've talked about before. In color study, we don't use conventional draftsmanship. We're drawing with planes, 
spots and planes, spots of color and planes of color. And we use planes for several reasons. But one is so that especially the beginner will come to a perceptual understanding of the three-dimensional quality of form. We're sculpting form in planes just like you sculptor you sculpt with clay and make planes to, to generate forms. Um, and by understanding that, you get an idea about the weight and volume of your objects and their, their, their visual presence, among other things. And the further you develop, you'll be able to see the four or five planes going around the shoulder of this pot, not so much as geometric shapes, but as the organic shape that the color's actually making. But it takes a good while to be able to see that. A lot of people will start falling back on conventional drawing to fix their inability to concentrate and be able to make planes and understand form. Uh, that's just something to, that you have to remember and do the best you can to, to stay on track with planes. Hey, buddy. Mr. Puff came to see us. It's Mr. Puff. I'll repeat something else that we've said several times, but everything Henry said bears repeating a thousand times. He repeated them a thousand times. Is that the note that you will see between these two planes is not these two colors mixed together, smeared together. That's a false note. Nor is any note adjacent to any other note simply a value change of whatever that note is. This note is not a lighter version of this blue-green. It's obviously a pink note. This note is obviously not a pale blue. It's also some kind of metallic off-looking green. Um, so you have to remember that. No notes repeat. No note 
is a simple value change of an adjacent note and no adjacent notes are smeared together to make the third note in between. You have to observe and figure out what that note is and try to make it as best you can. Meow. Hey buddies. And don't work on small boards like this. Get a 16 by 20 so you got room to move around. When you're modeling in planes, you have to do a lot of housekeeping. Shaping your notes. Getting rid of paint ridges.
Now that's that's the first round. What we want to do next is look at each one of these major variations that we've put in as modeling planes and see how the bottom third is a completely different color than the middle third is a completely different color than the top third. Um, and you will see probably at some point many more than that, but you want to understand how the form is tapering up, beginning to curve, curves over the shoulder, and then has this resting place on the top. That's the point of all the modeling is for you to understand the volumetric form or what the term Henry used, the rotundity of those volumes and how each volume relates to each other and to the ground plane and how they're seen at that distance from the eye, which is part of the color relationship also.